Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today I want to go over coffee. Not so much coffee itself, which I probably drink about 20 to 25 cups a day. Just kidding, it's usually about 10 to 12. It's about used coffee grounds. Yes, those beautiful used coffee grounds. A free resource. Now, in this article that I've had for several years now, because coffee grounds have been used in our garden for several years, and I want to say to you that there's some things that are myths, and there's some things that are, just like the video is called, ups and downs of coffee grounds and garden. So I'm going to give you the pros and the cons about it, the ups and downs. Now, there are some things that you should be concerned about with coffee grounds, but not so much because what we can do it's all in the details of things that we can use those coffee grounds safely in the garden I'm going to show you how it's very simple to do and it's also fantastic for your garden there's probably not a better free resource out there well kind of leaves and wood chips kind of fall into that category but coffee grounds actually do it much quicker so Let's go and show you some beautiful coffee grounds in that article, and then you'll have a great idea and confidence to get out there and do your gardening organically. And organically is the, probably the cheapest method out there. You don't have to buy it just like I did in the last video. And I thank you so very much for all your beautiful comments. I missed you also too. And we're gonna get through this gardening season. I know there's a lot going on in the world, but you know what? We have this covered and I will show you how to do this and again, not be panicking one bit because we don't need fertilizer. Guess what? Everybody else does, not us. We were smart. We started organic gardening years ago and we don't have to worry about the cost of fertilizer out there. So let's get into it. I mean by that is that we don't have to buy organic fertilizer now it's completely up to you whether you wish to buy fertilizer or not now I live on a 22 acre organic farm I've been growing organic vegetables for quite some time now probably for the last 12 years 12 or plus years now I've first started out using organic fertilizers and then I weaned off because it was so expensive to do, especially on my farm. And I've been using this other method of just uh, basically in understanding the soil biology. Our soil is a living part of our planet. It has all different kinds of microorganisms. Now, like I explained in the other video, which is very good for you to watch, is that we have bacteria and fungi that's in our soil, and that breaks things down. Now, there's all kinds of bacteria and there's all kinds of fungi. There's hundreds of different types of them. And what that does is those two things break down. Then we have our predators, our nematodes and protozoa. And there's pictures of that in the previous video and they eat those bacteria and fungi and release nutrients now, there's also something called the, the nitrogen cycle and that just keeps revolving and both of them just keep revolving circles and circles of eating things and releasing nutrients to the plant and the plant signals what it needs and talks to the soil through exudates in the soil now what our coffee grounds are going to be doing, and I'll show you that article in a little bit, is going to open your eyes up a little bit more how abundant and how easy it is to use them in your garden to get that soil biology going and also adding so many beautiful things. I don't want to go into it because I might miss something. So let me start reading this article to you and it's still going going to do an amazing job for you to understand and you'll never want to throw away your coffee grounds you want to put them right directly in the garden and if you can't do that you can pick up coffee grounds at your local starbucks or coffee shops just go in there and have a friendly conversation with the people and you can get five gallons 10 gallons 15 gallons of coffee grounds and then place them in your garden through another process and also it's a free resource and it's again it's the best thing you can possibly do so let's get into some of the myths number one is going to be does it change the ph of my soil mark no it does not it does not add anything or decrease or increase the ph of your soil the coffee grounds are pretty much on the neutral side. And that will be, and I'll show you the numbers in the, in the future in the article. And number two is, 
do coffee grounds add caffeine to the soil? No. Once the coffee grounds are, say, spent here, that they have been uh, filtered through, there's no caffeine left into it. Now, uh, what's the other one? Oh, should we use organic coffee grounds only because of the pesticides and because coffee plants have been sprayed heavily over the years and still are today? So imagine this is your coffee bean. The coffee bean is inside a shell. It is, let's say, extracted from the shell, then roasted, and then broken apart and ground down. Now, we don't like the word pesticides or herbicides. Now, there, I can definitely see how people have a concern about this, you know, going inside the, you know, let's say, the coffee bean itself. It is pretty much protected by other things. It's washed. Now, again, people are using less and less pesticides and herbicides on those types of plants because there is our public opinion that it might be something wrong with that. Now, I haven't seen any studies on it that is either pros and cons about it and has not, let's say, uh, got into our uh, coffee grounds that we use ourselves. Now, if you wish to buy organic coffee only, that's again your choice, but I don't see any hazard from the previous one. And again, if you feel different, I'm not gonna talk you out of it or it's any other problem. I have never seen it or something like that. Now, also in the article is a very good thing because when you get your coffee grounds in your garden, that actually if there's any pesticides or even pesticides that is in your garden that might have traveled over from wind or anything else too, those pesticides and herbicides are binded together. That's what the soil does. Binds those pesticides, those bad chemicals, into the coffee grounds itself and locks it in. And that's what it does. And actually then it takes carbon out, you know, also your soil food web, takes carbon out of the atmosphere and binds it also with carbon and then reduces or even eliminates those pesticides and herbicides. Because nature has to do this to keep our soil healthy and healthy for plants. So this nature has developed this over the years to take those, let's say, unwanted things from volcanoes, sulfur, and all those other high toxic things that might be in our environment from just things happening in, the, in nature itself. And they'll bind it and lock it in the coffee grounds and thus turn to carbon and then lock it in our soil. And it doesn't ever, uh, people use the word leaching or something else either that goes back into the plant. The plant only takes up what it needs and will not take up those other things that I described. So here's the name of the article, and you'll also find a copy of this article. It's three pages long on my Facebook page, so you can get a better view of it and also read the entire article. And then you'll see the ups and downs that they go through on coffee grounds. So, but let's go into uh, something very simple. Let's go into the coffee ground facts that is listed in the article. So let's get into the first couple of facts here. Coffee grounds contain approximately 2% nitrogen, 0.6% phosphorus, and 0.6% potassium. Now it's great to have them in those coffee grounds. Now why is this available? Like I mentioned in the other video, if we have sand, silt, and clay, we have those N, P, and K locked up inside our sand, silt, and clay that needs the biology to release them. But this comes into play, let's say you're using a potting mix, or, and sometimes they'll call it potting soil. It's really a mix. It's a heavily used uh, peat moss in that bag to give you, let's say, a potting mixture. It's not soil. So if you use coffee grounds inside your potting mix, over time, you'll get the benefit of these other things and also start feeding those soil microbes. So let's go to fact number two. The nitrogen in the coffee grounds is primary food in proteins and uh, other organic molecules unavailable to the plants. Again, that's what I mentioned in my other video. Until soil microorganisms break them down into simple ions, as a result, the nitrate in coffee grounds is released slowly over time and when plants need it. That's what I was saying in the other video. You need that, and also this one in the beginning. You need that bacteria and fungi to first eat that. All those different types of hundreds of bacteria and fungi to eat that 
And then you have those other things like protozoa and nematodes come along and eat them and then release it. The next fact here says coffee grounds are slightly acidic, 5.5 to 6.8 pH. Now also what I want to bring into here, your plant controls the pH in the soil. Now that's a real soil, your sand, salt, and clay. We know this because we've seen over years now that when a plant uh, roots are in the soil, it gives out exudates. And those exudates can change the pH of the soil depending on what nutrients it needs and signals it, sells, it sends out. Now, also, coffee grounds, next fact, coffee grounds make an excellent compost feedstock with a carbon nitrogen ratio of 20 to 24 to 1. Now I've seen it listed as 25 to 1, but it it's actually breaks down quite quickly in compost in less probably than 30 days. So we have a good common feedstock and it also is just, and I've also, and we'll get into it later, is that some people feel like it has to be composted down. If you add small amounts to your garden over time, like a handful or, or just, you know, maybe a, a couple of cups or something like that, it's not going to hurt anything by any means. Use coffee grounds in amending mineral soils up to 35% by volume and be shown to improve soil structure, both short-term and long-term while improving the availabilities of, now again, there's more things in it, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, and copper. What's nice about this is that, again, they're using up to 35%. So if you have, let's say, a bucket that's 10 inches tall, you can add three inches of uh, coffee grounds, pure coffee grounds to that bucket and you're going to get the benefits of those coffee grounds and all those extra minerals in your peat moss solution. And also you're going to get those benefits in real soil too. So keep that in mind. It actually, now what is also that I want to bring up is that you had all these here, these uh, let's say available of phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, and copper, those things originally were in the soil where those coffee plants were grown and that plant extracted them to get them inside those coffee beans and also those you know, used coffee grounds and they're still there after all this time. Now our next amazing fact here is that it brings back humid acids or humus to our to our soil and our soils might be lacking that and here's a great way to bring it back to our soil. Now our next one here is coffee grounds can moderate soil temperature and increase soil water retention. Isn't that beautiful to know? This free source can do this on its own and we don't have to worry about it. So here's something that is awesome also too that I mentioned before. Coffee grounds along with other sources of soil organic matter can bind pesticide residues, preventing movement in the surrounding environment. Isn't, again, nature awesome and it can do this? So to be on the safe side with coffee grounds, you should really compost them down. It does take a long time to do, again, less than 30 days. Now, a lot of people, how much coffee grounds can I put in my compost? Now, if you have a standard compost pile, or let's say, let's use the volume of the compost that you have, because I don't know what size your compost pile is. You can use anywhere from 20 to 35% of that area of your compost, volume-wise, by putting used coffee grounds in there. Now, if you want to apply it directly to your garden, which I do from time to time, I put, and the article says it too, put about a half inch of used coffee grounds on the surface and then work it into the soil. You're not going to hurt the, let's say, the biology of the soil. You, you don't want to till it in or something like that. Just rake it in. You want to get it off the surface of the 
uh, soil. And also too, if you're going to rake it in, you don't have to worry about raking it too deeply, again, because you don't want those coffee grounds to grow, uh, let's say dry out. And if you're going to put a mulch on top, that's even gonna help it even better too. So put a half inch on top of your soil, and you can kind of slightly rake it in. You're not gonna hurt the microorganisms. They're gonna re uh, grow again. And then you can put a layer of mulch, like let's say anywhere from an inch or two inches on top of those coffee grounds. And then you're set. You are awesome. Soil is gonna just sing to you and is gonna be so happy that you have this product sitting there for you. There's a lot more to this article, and again, it's gonna be on my Facebook page. It's three pages long. You'll see other things in there. But enjoy your coffee, but better yet, enjoy your coffee grounds in the garden. They are safe, again, there's things that are ups and downs about them. And there's really, the downside to it is that you might have to compost them instead of putting directly into your, to your garden. Now, I think we've covered everything. If not, please write to me. I'm always here to answer your questions. And again, this article here, which is three pages long, is going to be on my Facebook page and you can read in more details and you might see something in there that you do have a question about. So again, write me and we'll go over it. So have a great time, enjoy Coffee Grounds. It's a free resource, you can pick them up in any coffee shop, just get in there and get them. And again, give this a thumbs up. It's great to see everybody again. And we're going to start linking everything together. I'm trying to put everything in order, minerals in the soil, free sources that we can get uh, using Coffee Grounds and the benefits of them. And also the next thing too, oh, one thing before I forget too, didn't use, uh, totally forgot about it. It's because I do it all the time and it doesn't come up. Is you can use, uh, and it's in the article, you can take coffee grounds and make, let's say, a coffee tea out of it as a nitrogen provider for your garden. So again, another <laughs> benefit of it. So have fun. I'll see you again shortly with another video. And probably the next one we're going to go over is again, we're going to explore and go back over alfalfa pellets and alfalfa meal. And again, after all these three videos, we're going to recap everything and show you how easy it is to organic gardening. Thanks.